do set screw holders push the tool against the far side and thus making them a bad tool holder to use? We hear this talked about a lot. Let's test it. So here's the fun thing. We should be able to test this pretty easily with some relatively inexpensive equipment. We've got a Tormach half inch TTS set screw holder. And if you're not familiar with the debate at hand here, the argument is that you, when you slide a tool into here, the fact that you're holding the tool with a set screw pushing that way, pushes the tool off to one side and thus inducing chatter and error and run out and making the world end. I happen to love the Tormach set screw holders. And in fact, generally, I prefer them over the ER collets. We talked about this in the video we did on a DIY injection mold. Um, ER collets can be better, but they're not always better. They also, at least for Tormox, they used to be more expensive. They're pretty much the same price now, uh, but you've got to also buy the collet. The other thing I want to emphasize is stick out or, uh, or rigidity. The, this is a really old Tormach ER uh, holder. It's a longer one. This is before they even had the ATC shank. This is a lot less rigid than this. And in my opinion, this is even less rigid than this solid set screw holder. So to test it, we've got a couple of sets of dowel pins, which we'll use. And we've got a Noga magnetic indicator holder. I love this one because you'll see in a minute, the fine adjust is in the base here. It makes it really easy to use our mid to Toya 10,000th of an inch indicator. Folks, this is amazing for, I don't know, the link in the video description, but hundred and some bucks. Every tick mark there is, what is that? One fortieth of a human hair. Um, just amazing that we can have this stuff this day and age for so little money. So let's, uh, let's use our four jaw skills or, or lack thereof to try to get a tool holder dialed in and then let's sweep the inside. We'll see if we can get that to zero right now. We'll put a tool in there and we'll see if it really does push it over to the side. We use a regular indicator to get it roughed in here. I honestly wonder if the limitation on this is going to be the chuck or my ability to dial it in because I think I'm going to call BS that basically there's no real measurable. Ooh, that was loose. That's weird. Deflection um, with this. Okay, so that's about a foul run out little inside of a thou there. Switch over. Before we get started though, I am going to call BS on this being any measurable amount of run out. And there's two reasons. One is I'm going to take a half inch gauge pin. And aside from the, that feeling like a really good fit, if I, you know, if I block the back end, it springs back. And if I block it and pull out, you get a really good popping noise. More, that's the fun way to do it. The realistic way is if I grab a 501 gauge pin, it won't go. So I've got at most under, half, under one thou of diametrical difference there. And I think it's frankly less. This is the backward of the way I normally dial in a four jaw, so bear with me. Okay, so that's low, low by about a thou right there. So I need to loosen a hair here. Sweet. Okay, so I'm going to say that's as good as I'm going to get this machine with run out of about th three tenths, two tenths maybe. 
Yeah, not even actually. That's that's not much at all right there. Beautiful Lakeshore carbide half inch ball rougher. Let's just slide it in first. Kind of have some fun here. So loose end mill. Let's just preload it. God, this mid to twist. It's just so like so smooth and it's so nice uh, compared to just a clunky old thousandths indicator. So how much? Okay, so that would tell you you've got potentially up to, you know, what is that? Two tenths going up to nine tenths, so seven tenths of run out. Um, but remember, so we had no, what would we say, one thou, one tenth measurable run out um, when we started. So let's see here, I need to really choke up as much as I can. So what happens when we tighten the tool? Uh, two tenths there. Cool. So looks like about two tenths. Now, I'm not sure, let's be honest here, when we're talking about tenths, so, I mean, this lathe has got slop in it. There's so many factors here. So I'm not going to all of a sudden just pin it on something. Uh, but let's see what happens. This is kind of the big test here. So low point is now maybe two tenths. High point, just a touch over five tenths. So three tenths. Let's see if that's okay. So now here's the question. Actually, in theory, the tool. This should be the low spot. I'm off the part. I come on and I zero over the set screw. And as I rotate around, it should add, go closer to the one. So yeah, looks like, again, the tenths really matter here. Three tenths, I'm in kind of inclined to say it's probably less than that. Um, why? Just because that would be attributing every bit of run out to um, the set screw and the tool diameter. Eh, you know, it could be, it could be the tool diameter combined with uh, that set screw. Um, it could be other factors that are contributing to that run out, but certainly not more than that. So does this matter? For small tools, it would matter, but the smallest set screw holder we use is quarter inch. And it, I'll tell you, it doesn't matter in terms of tool life or finish that we've seen on Tormox. On a half inch tool, fine. On a one a 30 second end mill, sure, uh, actually. But even then, the, the rule of thumb that John Grimsel was telling me, he's cut a lot of Torx heads with a 20 thou end mill, is try to get your tool run out to within three tenths. We're there, we're fine with the set screw holder. This idea that it pushes it over to the side is a little bit exaggerated. Uh, Al from AB Tool, we did an awesome tour there, card here, was saying when they grind and hone their uh, tool extenders, so they make extensions for holding tools with longer stick outs, uh, it's like it pushes it to the side like 15 million. So what is that? 0.15 of a tenth, I think. Um, but let's try one more thing. We've got these brand new shiny Maritool. This is a three quarter inch holder. Let's set screw holder. Let's chuck it up. Let me see if I can get it dialed in and let's do the same test and let's see what happens. Cat 40, three quarter inch set screw holder chucked up. I put some tape around the edge because I'm a big wimp and these are brand new Maritou holders and I don't want to screw them up, but it shouldn't matter because we should still be able to, you know, you don't need tremendous clamping power here to dial it in. And sure enough, we do have it dialed in. You take a look, I'm within, uh, it was a 10. Looks like it's now two, well, yeah, it's inside of two tenths. So we've got two different tools. We've got a three quarter inch end mill. This is the end mill, by the way, that I was titting the end with a hammer in our parody video 
on machining a pumpkin. We received a lot of angry emails. Do not ever hammer on your end mills, folks. That was a joke. This one is already broken, but of course I'm not gonna throw this away. It's like a $175 end mill. The chips, the tooth is broken, but we'll figure something out to use, uh, use it for. We got this and I've got a ground precision 750 gauge pin. Now these are sold as plus sets and minus sets, so they're ground to a spec. I believe the spec on plus or minus is two tenths. And I, I, this, I bought this set used um, at an auction. It's not labeled whether it's plus or minus. I, could, I didn't even think to mic it. Um, most of the time I've seen minus sets and the fact that it fits in there tells me it's most likely a minus set. So let's get this. Um, so again, just to double check, very minimal run out. Trying not to slice our hand open. Oh my God, that fits nicely. Wow. It's loose still. There's enough natural friction that it'll still rotate uh, fine. So let's see what we get on a measurement. We'll zero off the set screw side though. We're zeroed there, so let's rotate the chuck. So in theory, it should go clockwise to increase pressure. Ooh, whoa. Now we're not tight yet. Interesting. Okay. Not much wiggle. That's a lot. So let's see what happens when we tighten that screw. It didn't seem like anything. A little over thou. Now, this is a three quarter inch holder, so the bigger you get, the more natural uh, forgiveness there's gonna be, or, or slop, I guess. But that's reading well over thou, no doubt. Um, let's try the gauge pin. Does somebody know? There might be a bigger spec tolerance range too for the quality, uh, the diameter of the, of the end mill. When they get to be this, this big, Zero plus six minus one. No kidding. No kidding. That's a lot more than I expected. Tighten it up. Yeah. Now let's, without stopping the camera, let's go check our bore again. I'm kind of curious because we're using tape. Maybe this is a bogus reading because I've put pushing it around, it could have moved on us. That's not fair. Zero. Four. Isn't that funny how it kind of settles in though? That's where I'd love to have a metrology class on precision machining because I'm sure, or measuring, because I'm sure I'm doing some things wrong here. Uh, or there's the very important workflows and processes, you know, Tom Lipton talks about it. You're just holding the part warms it up and uh, how can I use the basic tools to do this even better? Um, Cause now I'm getting, uh, you know, a little less than, I'd say about two and a half tenths. So let's, let's talk in the comments below. What do you guys think? Um, I, the answer that I was expecting with the set screw holder, three tenths, like not a measurable or real issue, seriously. In fact, if you go again, watch that injection mold video, when you chuck up a regular old ER collet, especially using import quality ER collets, not necessarily paying attention to it, not tor torque specking it down, you're probably gonna get worse than that to start with. So in some respects, the set screw holder is faster and more accurate off the bat. Um, I'm surprised about that though. Wonder why we're getting over thou with a bigger tool like that. I'd love to hear your thoughts below, but otherwise guys, uh, take care, enjoy. See you next Wednesday.